Bon la cow, my garden of roses. Let's spend some time talking about something that I talk about quite a lot. The monopoly that is Google. The oligopoly that is the Silicon Valley. Now, I've spoken about this subject a lot. I have severe concerns about where Google stands as a singular monolith of search and search advertising power who is able to, with a change of a line of code or through very underhanded methods, uh, usually including stealing someone else's technology, doing it less efficiently, and then forcing others out of the search results in order to keep people on Google, they are able to maintain a strength over every other corporation who comes forward and attempts to provide a service better. The New York Times article uh, linked below, well, okay, the archive.is link below that uh, has a copy of the New York Times article, I should say, <coughs> describes one company, Foundum, and its two founders who managed to accomplish something that Google has constantly struggled with because Google's search results are so broadly based, and it's a subject called vertical search. The ability to narrow down search results based on numbers of parameters. And they're not the only ones who have suffered from this. There are companies all over who have endured watching their page rank on Google drop near zero because of essentially doing something better than Google and not selling out to them. And that's a big part of it. Uh, but when we talk about antitrust, when we talk about monopolies, it's important to understand a few details. So I want to cover those first. First, monopolies have only existed for about 115 years. No, less than that, about, and, about 110 years. And they are pretty complex because, for the most part, monopolies don't start as a problem for the consumer. They're a problem for competition within the market. You don't normally hear about complaints from the consumer when it comes to a monopoly. Usually, the consumer tends to be quite happy because they have what they think they need and their prices are relatively low, or in the case of Google, free with the addition of advertising. The problem arises when no other company is able to come up on a level to compete with them. And uh, this is where uh, companies like the Federal Trade Commission have, and the uh, European Commission on Antitrust, have a lot of trouble defining just what is a monopoly and just what is an oligopoly because you don't uh, the problem doesn't exist at the consumer level the problem exists at the market level and many people would rather the government not interfere with the market directly especially when it comes to lawsuits that will uh, div uh, divulge and break apart larger companies. Uh, an excellent example of this is uh, Standard Oil. The Standard Oil Corporation, founded by John Rockefeller, uh, was the technological giant of its time, uh, hiring scientists on top of scientists to improve the refinement and uh, transportation of kerosene to a point where it dropped from $3 a gallon of uh, whale oil to eight cents a gallon for a gallon of kerosene across the last 50 years of the 1800s. However, it became, Im <laughs> excuse me, it became impossible for anyone to compete with standard oil and the market basically stagnated with regards to them. Uh, there was no it, you know, antitrust laws were extremely young at that point, having only come into existence in the 1890s, and even then not being clearly defined in any way, shape, or form. And when it came time to actually sue Standard Oil and break it apart into the 34 companies it would become, 
later, you know, including shell oil and uh, many others. Uh, there were no strong laws to base it on because when a company becomes a monopoly, they tend to be doing what they've always been doing. Uh, it's only when they reach a scale that no one can compete with them that it, at this you know, with the laws that we have, we have had since 1906, only then does it actually become somewhere in the realm of illegal because their practices must be kept in check to avoid bottlenecking the entire market. Uh, and of course, we saw this happen in, um, with many other companies, most recently Microsoft, who was considered to be so big that in the 1990s they were embroiled with antitrust cases. And uh, despite these antitrust cases, Microsoft was able to endure as a single company instead of being broken apart. And in the process, it wasn't, you know, these antitrust cases that humbled Microsoft. No, it was actually a small search startup known as Google who did. But at this point, it doesn't appear anyone can compete with Google because Google is the gateway that one uses to be found on the modern internet. Approximately 87% of searches go through Google. Uh, Google and four other companies account for half a trillion dollars worth of wealth in the world, uh, known as the FANG group of corporations. And these firms are so powerful, Google, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and uh, Facebook, that they have basically the power to influence whether or not another social network or another search engine is even able to compete within the market. There is no other means. If you are on Google's search results and then lose those search results, you're going to see a direct correlation between that and losing all of the wealth that your company has accrued up until that point. And this is a very big concern for a lot of people, especially legislators right now. And the fact that it's taken, I mean, I've been talking about this with other tech people for nigh on a decade now, that Google has gotten too big, they've spread too wide, and their process of mergers and acquisitions or fucking you on the search results if you don't allow yourself to be absorbed by this Borg is absolutely within the realm of complete antitrust operations. And yet, most of the lawsuits that come up against Google are shot down very heavily. Google nego argues that, and I have some quotes here from uh, the last lawsuit against Google in 2013, Google maintains, uh, we, have, we make hundreds of changes to search every year, all with the same goal, delivering users the best, most relevant search results. Each change, large and small, affects millions of sites, some who see their rankings improve, others who drop. Our ultimate responsibility is to deliver the best results possible to our users, not specific placements for sites within our results, which is, it sounds all nice and good until you realize that Google has the power, even incidentally, to crush entire markets, to crush entire corporations, all with the slightest changes. The power they hold is far too great. And at this point, I don't see another option, except I also don't see the FTC being capable of attacking them on the grounds of antitrust without a very large clash action suit by corporations who have had their livelihoods destroyed by the mere whims of Google saying, well, uh, like, let's go through a list of different companies that have been destroyed by Google. Uh, let's see, you've got Foundum, which was a vertical search uh, corporation that essentially provided a far better search system for finding uh, pr uh, you know, the best price on something on the internet. 
and Google instead, uh, you know, Google tried to, uh, well, basically ignore them when they started making complaints about the system being completely rigged against them two days after they went public. Uh, there are intern emails that came out in the 2013, uh, uh, 2013 case which show that Google actually is very much against any company who produces a vertical search algorithm that is more efficient than any of theirs. There's Yelp, which most people probably remember. Uh, that uh, a site that essentially uh, provided user uh, generated reviews for food and pubs and the like uh, related to searches with the word nearby or close by in them. And for a long time, Yelp would appear at the beginning of Google searches. However, after Google attempted to buy out Yelp and, and the uh, buyout purchase was refused, uh, Google began pulling Yelp's content into their website without their request. And by copying that information from Google's web, uh, from Yelp to their own uh, content, to their own servers and presenting it directly as Google data, they eventually drove Yelp nearly out of business. Uh, let's see, Getty Images, a very famous stock photo and uh, open photo repository, started uh, lost a large amount of traffic and advertising money when Google began just directly copying their images onto their own servers. Uh, this is something you can actually go look at now. A recent change to Google Images doesn't even have an option to view the image directly from its source. Now you can only go to the page. However, the image is still displayed there on Google for you to right click and save. Uh, let's see, there's um, uh, Skyhook. Skyhook produced a better GPS algorithm for mapping routes. And when Google uh, saw that they were making deals with firms like Motorola and Samsung, uh, Google went to these firms and said, we're going to lock you out. We're going to, you know, throttle your search results if you don't. Uh, continue using our software if you don't continue using our GPS engine and Skyhook was essentially sold off, had to eventually sell themselves off at an extremely high discount in order to contain in order to maintain themselves this is a process called mergers and acquisitions which sounds remarkably mundane but when a monopoly does it when a powerhouse like Google does it you are you essentially have two choices, either be bought out and watch your technology flounder or fight back and lose against the 800 pound gorilla who is going to destroy your search results, destroy your livelihood, destroy your relationships with partners in other corporations, and eventually force you into a position where you have no choice but to sell, if not to them, to someone else much smaller for a much, much lower price. Google controls the game. If Google wants you to succeed, they will let you succeed. And if they don't want you to succeed, you are going to crash hard and they will end up getting your algorithm one way or another. Now, does this mean that Google puts it to use? Hardly. Google does not have the best search engine out there. They merely have the most diverse and uh, broadly used search engine. It's the most popular. And it's very simple to say, most popular does not equate to best. Take, for example, Google Shopping, which still has absolutely horrific times trying to show you exactly what you're searching for, as it is far easier, for example, to find headphones for an iPad than an actual iPad at the best price. And on top of this, you have oligopolistic practices that take place between enormous companies like Amazon and Google, who, while in direct competition, uh, basically play nice with each other in order to, you know, and 
reduce the amount of development they do in different technology sectors, for example, product search versus um, information search, to make sure that they're not stepping on each other's toes. And this is where the oligopoly comes in. This is why these companies, the so-called FANG companies, need to be investigated. And this is also a reason why people need to get out there and start using the alt tech. If you still use Google as your primary search engine, go into your browser settings and change your search engine to DuckDuckGo or Circs.me, uh, one of these smaller ones. Take away their central control because that is all the consumers can do to assure that the market is a fair and balanced place to operate and not centrally uh, invested in five companies disallowing anyone else into the market and disallowing any sort of growth. Google needs to be taken down a peg and that's not going to be, and at this point I don't think that can be done by the Federal Trade Commission. It has to be done by consumers saying, you know, Google may be the biggest, but I want to see what these other guys have to offer. And if I support them for long enough and tell other people to support them for long enough, then maybe, just maybe, we can see someone get large enough to compete and actually provide better tech, not just popular tech. Thank you, and I will catch you next time. Bonsoir. Mm -hmm.